Welcome to the whiskey vault. You okay? I'm trying to get my energy up. You all right? Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, 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 we learned something about Daniel. So he's been faking it. No, no. no it, this has been in, no, not true. He's been faking it in a. This is a persona defining way. No. Nope. Everything you know and I don't know potentially love for who knows nope, what. Not been faking about Daniel. Nope. He's been faking it. <laughs> Now this is from Will Martin. Will Martin! <sighs> Rumor has it that Will Martin is pretty magnificent. But not just a general vague kind of magnificence. His magnificence come in a very, it comes in a very specific flavor. What flavor is that, Rex? You magnificent bastard! All right, this is Blue Hanger, I'm, seventh release. After Blue like Malt. a million damn Magnificent Masters, I'm sure there's some people watching that are like, hey, mix it up. Yeah, <laughs> we get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Although we haven't had specific complaints, I just no. I just feel that, I sense that. What happens is if we don't do it, everyone freaks out. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not <laughs> That's saying. That's when it's crazy. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying yeah. maybe we take it to like another level. We still but do the But we ceremony. wore hats and we sang and no, 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 how no. can we take it more than that? We get tattoos of every magnificent bastard. <laughs> That's for the 100 millionth subscriber. Mm. That's a lot. We'll get a tattoo. All right. Okay. I hate, I hate that too. Yeah. It'll be like a split tattoo. You get half like Yeah. That. And it'll be a heart. <laughs> you know what? 100 million, I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <Yeah. laughs> Okay, so this is actually from Berry Brothers and Rudd. Okay. These are wine merchants and uh, whiskey merchants, which are sourcing things, blending things, Ooh. bottling things. Seems scotchy on the nose. Uh, their origins date back to 1698. Like a, How's that for old school? Multi Earth. I love it when whiskey companies were drinking predate our country. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I can't figure it out. At first, there was a little bit of a sour note, but the more I get into it, it's going away and it's becoming more of an iodine. This is reminding me of Springbank almost. Mm, I'm getting a like a little bit of a Highland Park vibe. Mm. Okay, I can tell you what's in this, and all of a sudden, it will all make sense. Okay. This is one hogshead of Brooklodic. Forty-five point six percent. One hogshead of Brooklodic, nineteen ninety-two. It's a hogshead. It's a size of barrel sherry hogshead. Okay. Uh, one butt of Bunahaban, 1990. Hogsheads and butts? Mm-hmm. Four barrels of Milton Duff. Remember Milton Duff we've had. And two barrels of Bunahaban Moin, the peated Bunahaban. Okay. So, and that's the youngest one. The peated Bunahaban is the youngest one. So without those, it would have been 15 to 22 years old. Okay. But because they added in that two barrels of Boone Hobbin Moyne at 2006, it's a six, seven year old whiskey. Whoa. That they, if they put an age statement, it would have said six or seven, even though there's some 20 plus, that is, potentially some 20 plus barrels in there. Man, that's, uh, so I, based on 45.6%, mm -hmm. based on their willingness to walk away from 22 years old, mm -hmm. that's, I'm, I'm, and based on the nose, I'm very optimistic that this is going to be an exception. Whoa, okay, wait, 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 pull away, pull away. <laughs> I just went last night, or a couple nights ago, so my dad's rule is when he comes and watches the boys, they have to already be in bed. I wish parenting were like, work like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to come home and mend parents, but so you, my must, dad, I'm like, hey, you, you must babysit? all be unconscious. That's right. It's like, yeah, yeah, but they have to already be in bed when I get there. And my, now he doesn't require payment and m money, yeah. but he requires a waiting martini. Already made yeah. and ready to go. Yeah, yeah. right. See so it. that's the rule. Now the good, the, the upside is. See a dirty guy. My dad, yeah. My dad does not care when we come home. Whereas you know my mom will, can show up and do all the work with the boys. Right. But we got to be home by like nine. My dad, we can come home one, two. What you do? He's still out on the deck. It's tag team. You send, I know. We've, you send we've done in that. your mom. We've done that. And then she goes out of business. Your yep. dad checks in. Yep. Dave. They've done the tag team before. Oh man. Um, so anyway, because of this, I've been making some martinis recently, mm -hmm. and just now I picked up the glass, and what I got was gin and green olives. I'm not getting it. It just jumped out of the glass at me for a split second. Actually, not gin, so that when you open up the green olive and you get vermouth-soaked green olives. Okay, there you go. 
I'm, yeah, I'm not getting the gin. So the wine vermouth soaked green olives. Yeah, I can get that. Isn't that trippy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It caught me off guard because it was sharp, right? All right, I'm tasting now. Oh, yeah. That's really nice. Dude, now, honey, I think this is around 100 bucks a bottle. Honey and brine and wood and earth. Mm. I would put that up against any high quality blended whiskey. And I it, would put that up against a lot of single and malts. And it's just balanced all the way through. And remember this is blended malt, so it's all malt whiskey, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That is good! Damn! But I would still have leaned Springbank if I didn't know there's no Springbank in there. This isn't particularly clingy. No, like, it's not. It, Heavy it, oil. It, it falls off the cliff pretty quick. So it doesn't stay with you, it doesn't linger a long, long time. But while it's there, it's really yeah, nice. And Springbank lingers. Mm. I don't, you know, I would think mm. there would be more fruity notes in this, but there's none. I think the no. Borclodic and the Buna Hobbin Any sweetness is... Are just taken over. Any sweetness is like a, a, a honey sweetness. Yeah, yeah, not a fruity sweetness. No. But our Milton Duff that we have somewhere, we have a 31 year old Yeah, Milton we'll Duff. compare that too. No, we're not gonna compare the 31 year old Milton Duff to this. I don't think you do this whiskey any... <laughs> Any, any favors by not comparing it to something meaningful. I think this can hold its own. I think you're... you're I like this argument you're attempting to make here. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> argument. <laughs> I think we have we have a contender. Could and have then, been a contender. And for whatever reason, you feel like you don't have... No, a, I was going to try to You feel like this. you don't have enough whiskey, is what you're saying right now, <laughs> to make a valid comparison. I was going to try to blend this from Brook Lodick and Boone Hoven. Here's what we'll do. I won't make you pull out the 31-year-old whiskey. If all the whiskeys that go into the blend, I get an individual pour from each. No! No, no, no. Well, I'll give you a full glass of the blend. I don't want to, I'm gonna just, dude, that, that's gonna exist anyway. I need something that isn't already going to exist along the way. Degmar. Anejo means year. No. Ano or Año means year. Forgot the tilde, Degmar. Anejo means aged. Yeah. Sometimes my wife talks. Just to talk also. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you just keep running your damn mouth. Yeah, totally. Uh, so I put that in there because as soon as we ended the episode, my brain went, dude, and that hook does not mean year. You want to know who was but, right? You know, you want to know who was correct with the Spanish? Hmm. Mr. Rojo. Mr. Rojo. Right here. Throwing down the red. Uh, it's either Jesus Sains or Jesus Sains. Uh, hi, a friend is going to get married in a few months, and both him and his future wife enjoy drinking. Up until now, their favorite scotches are Johnny Walker Green Label, mixed experiences with the Gold Label, Glenfiddich 15 and Glenfiddich 18. I want to surprise them with something fancy, but similar to those ones in taste, so they would still like it. But my budget is between $200 and $250 per bottle. Okay. Get, got any ideas of what I can get them? Thank you. Uh, so they like Johnny Walker Green. They like Glenfiddich 15, Glenfiddich 18. They, what do you think? Like, you guys put suggestions in the comments. Would what they, should he get? Would they like the blue? 200 $250? Yeah, but I mean the blue will get you uh, brand points. I'm saying. no. But there's going to be a better bottle. As a gift. Yeah. As a gift though. If that's the ballpark range, they already like Johnny Walker Green. I think you could get some... Uh, get a special edition blue like the Ghost. Ghost one, in, right? Like the Ghost in Rare. And uh, just because they particularly will probably freak out about that. Yeah. So, um, and again, gift whiskeys aren't necessarily the whiskeys that you're giving because they are objectively, in your opinion objectively, the best whiskey. You're going for perceived value and appreciation as well. And something like a blue. If they're already Johnny Walker fans. So here's like, what I'm going to do with these bottles. Instead of well. actually trying to test it and decide if I'm getting close, I'm simply going to pour them in the proportions that they listed that their barrels were in. So do a hogshead and a butt. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, so I need, you know what, I'm going to use a little shot glass as my measuring. Mm. A little shot glass from Two Bar Spirits in Washington. And you okay. Know Seattle. I'm, I'm getting peatiness. This this doesn't present as like a, a meaty peat. So I'm going to use the Brooklodic Isle of Barley because it's unpeated. Mm -hmm. And there will be one of that. Choo. I'm going to use one of Buna Hob and I'm going to use the 12 because they did they said that the other one was peated which means this is probably unpeated. Mm -hmm. And the 12 is almost unpeated. 
Uh, the next was two hogsheads of the Bunahaban peated. So I got Chowabonic, because that's a Bunahaban peated. Mm -hmm. It's not the one they mentioned, but it is a one. So a hogshead. One. Is it two. roughly the size of a hogshead? <laughs> you know. Oh, it really should be. What? It, how big? Is and then the thing? last one was four of Milton Duff, and because I don't have a classic Milton Duff, I'm gonna use one that the last time I tried a classic Milton Duff reminded me of Milton Duff, and it was Deanston. Deanston felt to me like a similar direction in the family as Milton Duff. How big is a hog's head? Uh, slightly larger than a pig head, but not as big as a bull head. He's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> just wait for the twitch and then he's bullshit. Yeah. Okay, so we're comparing this uh, blue hanger to whatever monstrosity you put together. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Hey, it's actually not too far yeah. off. Feels like... Uh, I mean, I didn't do any testing. I just sort of mixed it in random proportions compared to what they put on their sheet. I'm getting more peatiness out of the blue hanger. Okay. I think we're like 70% there. Yeah, I think it's, it needs a little more peat. Yep, yeah, a little bit more peat. It's going in that direction, though. Yeah. Hey, that really worked. Taste it. Mm -hmm. It actually, it, it actually in the nose needs more peat, but on the taste, it's almost the same. Nah. Yeah. And the aftertaste isn't the same, but the initial rush. I'm gonna put a little more peated Buna Hobbin in there. Oh yeah, that's fine. I will tell you, that's a good blend, but I mean, between these 34 bottles, we're talking about $200 worth of whiskey already. So there's a little bit more of a... Now we did save, because this is $100, and we got four. Sure. You would make out a little bit better. There is a bit more of a rich earthiness in here, though. Mm-hmm. And the peatiness isn't like a meaty, smoked meaty peat. It's not that kind of peat. I it's think that's like because the, I used the wrong brooklotic. So this is an unpeated brooklotic. If I had used a more of a peated wait, so brooklotic. So you didn't put a you didn't put a peaty thing in there? No, I put the unpeated because I figured we would get the peat from, from the Bunahaban. Bunahaban. All right. All right. Uh, S. Dan 490, you magnificent bastards. My friends, uh, for once, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I just tasted four Irish whiskeys. Redbreast 12, Greenspot, Jameson, and Slane. Never Slane heard. Castle. Okay. And I have to say that Redbreast 12 took home the prize for me. What disagreement? That's my... No, he, I, with me. Oh. It was with me. Because oh, I keep okay. saying, no, Greenspot's the unicorn. But Green the thing Spot, is, Green Spot is a unicorn. Green Spot is a damn fine whiskey, but yeah. being in how I am typically a bourbon drinker and prefer deep and oaky whiskeys, Green Spot is just a little too light and bright for me when compared to Red Breast. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with that. I remember <laughs> that you all did a comparison video with Red Breast 12 and Green Spot and Jameson together and watched this as I was tasting. That sounds like a great time that I have no memory of. Yeah, me either. But anyways, <laughs> cheers mates to a long life and happy. You know what I want to do? <laughs> Just for the people. Go back in time. Just for the people. Uh, we did the top whatever ad, uh, whiskeys for advanced whiskey drinkers. Oh, yeah. We did this, but we did it in like a live stream, and on our live stream, kind of always have something technically wonky with them. I think with that one, it was like grainy or some shit. I, wanted, I really like the premise, though, of the whiskey for advanced whiskey drinkers. The thing is, I think almost all of those whiskeys were scotches. Mm -hmm. And I want to get advanced whiskey drinkers' preferences for different kinds of whiskeys that's, that's not necessarily scotch. Okay. Because we had that open to all whiskeys, but scotch took home. Did scotch took it home because, of course, it did. I want to, speaking of Irish whiskey, <laughs> I want to do the top whatever the hell number of Irish whiskeys for advanced whiskey drinkers. Okay. For like, hey, you're not doing shots of Jameson. And yeah. Irish car bombs. So you want some complexity in Irish yes, whiskey. The, the premise for advanced, uh, an advanced whiskey is basically nuance and complexity and things that there's a lot of not harder to love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More nuanced and complex. Not challenging. It's like oh, I just really got to sack up to get this down. But there's a lot going on in there that you kind of have to be going going around the block a few times to fully appreciate that. Yes. I'm all in on that, man. I love Irish whiskey. Okay, in the comments. Irish whiskey people. Oh, that means I gotta start a spreadsheet. <sighs> you love spreadsheets. I really, actually, Wait a I minute. do, but I don't like compiling them. You don't like spreadsheets? I don't like data entry. I love spreadsheets. Have you but been? I don't like data faking, entry. Faking it this whole time? No, I love spreadsheets. I just don't like data entry. <sighs> and and when I have to go through the comments 
And dude, cut and paste for 300 comments? You know who can do this? It's a pain in the ass. You know who can do this? Emma. Emma. (laughs) 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 All right. Go to town, you bastard. On the clock. Okay, so basically, (laughs) not necessarily just your go-to daily Irish uh, sipper, but something that you feel like has a lot of nuance and complexity that you have to be kind of, you know, an experienced drinker to fully appreciate. Yep. Irish whiskeys in the comments below. We're going to gather these for a few days and see what we end up with. All right. Really? You took that one? There you go. I gave you some back. Good. All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. You fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may may you drink drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, drop a question or comment down below.